Hello there, and welcome back to The Neighborhood. We're taking a look at a little dynamo of a tube amplifier, the Musical Paradise MP301. This thing is seriously small, but packs a big punch for high efficiency speakers. Let's get into it. So this build is very solid, especially for the price. And the price is kind of astounding. It's only $366 plus $50 shipping in its stock form. Add-on options include EL34 or Svein KT88 power tubes, new old stock 6SJ7 buffer tubes, or a headphone adapter for headphones under 32 ohms. But even with the most expensive additions, this thing is still only a bit above $500. And honestly, I wouldn't really recommend getting any of the additions as alternative tubes to the ones offered on the website resulted in the best sound outcomes to my ears. And the headphone adapter wasn't as effective as an iFi IE match. You see, this amplifier is capable of using a whole host of tubes. I won't list them all, but I'll put them all up on screen here for you to take a look at. And I went tube crazy with this one, and I tried almost every single tube type that I could afford to pick up off eBay. I experimented with the stock tubes, 6L6 tubes, EL34 tubes, 6SJ7 tubes, 6SD7 tubes, and others that we'll get into in a moment. But in the end, I ended up with at least two different tube combinations that were my favorites. And these weren't what others have traditionally recommended on the internet. You see, if you ask the internet, people will tell you that the best buffer tube for this amplifier is the RCA Red 5693 tube. And the best power tube is the Gold Lion KT77. And I might agree with the internet if someone has an extremely warm set of speakers or a warm system otherwise. But in a reference system, the sound profile from these two tube combinations was just too lean, sheeny, and ultimately rather artificial sounding. To my ears, I wanted a more natural and realistic presentation that still brought some detail and resolution to the party. The two combinations that I liked best were a metal CBS 6SJ7 tube in combination with a tongue sole 7581A reissue and a glass Sylvanian 6SJ7 GT buffer tube combined with the Electro Harmonix 6CA7 tube. And I have each of these combinations employed in this amp in different locations in my house at the time. You see, this amp is priced so low and performs so well that I actually ended up with two of them. I placed one in my main listening room to drive a set of Wolf von Lagna Sohn Fiocol Dipole loudspeakers, and the other upstairs at the headphone desk to drive a set of Cesaro Horn Acoustics Mini Wagner speakers in a near field orientation, and also to serve as a secondary set tube amp for headphones to complement my dark voice. The CBS tubes with the tongue soles are being utilized at my desk and the Sylvanians and Electro Harmonics in my main speaker system. And in each system, I'm getting a neutral but musical reference sound that matches each speaker and its corresponding chain extremely well. But in terms of that sound, its profile is really gonna vary depending on which tubes you put into it. For example, I could get a good beefy tone by using a metal Sylvanian 6SJ7 as buffer tubes with a JJ6CA7 driver. This profile was a wee bit rolled off at top, but guttural in its mid-range and rhythmically thickened in its bottom bin, and it was very satisfying. Yet no matter the pre-tube, the Electro Harmonix 6CA7 provided an additional detail and presented a tighter, faster, and more even sounding manner in comparison to the other tubes. But I will say that I think glass pre-tubes are worth the effort to track down if you can find the GT variety of the 6SJ7. With a full set of glass tubes for all four tubes, the Musical Paradise seemed to gain some additional resolution and clarity, and was more silent compared to being buffered with most of their metal tube counterparts, which in general had a tendency to be noisier. With that said, I definitely found some low noise metal 6SJ7 tubes like the CBS tubes, Yellow Sylvanians, and the Brown Bottom GE tubes. Nevertheless, throughout the course of my extensive evaluation, there were some common themes regarding the sound of the MP301 that I did notice and we should hit on. First of all, this thing gets that sweet, tube-influenced soundstage, producing great dimensional sound with your music. What am I talking about? Well, with a quality tube amplifier, like the MP301, you get more of a sense of being within the music than observing it from afar. There's a greater sense of separation, a bigger sense of scope, and more range from side to side, top to bottom, and forward to back. So the soundstage with this amplifier is very good. 
The MP301's mid-range and vocal performance are also generally quite excellent. Overall, the mid-range is silky smooth, appropriately forward, and buttery. Vocals are also nicely highlighted and sing out to the listener, allowing for a great connection with the music as it's presented. In other words, I think a thematic takeaway was that the mid-range performance of the Musical Paradise MP301 is consistently fantastic, and its low-end and treble portions of its frequency response is where things can be altered the most. In regards to its performance as a headphone amplifier section, though, I have to say, it was a bit of a double-edged sword. Don't get me wrong, it sounds great. But even super high-impedance dynamic headphones, ranging from 300 to 600 ohms, displayed an ambient hum, that is, without an iFi IE match adapter. Furthermore, switching tubes really didn't remedy this. Although, some tubes were quieter than others, like the Tung Soul 7581A reissue power tube. But even with this tube without an adapter, it sounded like a low-level crackling fire or a small conch shell placed to one's ear. But I mostly only heard this when sound was not playing. So it's not really a ton of noise, and with most headphones, it's actually pretty faint in totality. And from a positive standpoint, when the source is outputting sound, almost all of the background noise becomes practically imperceptible, with virtually any headphone, that is. But uniquely for a tube amplifier, these noise observations were for the most part more readily apparent with certain high-ohm dynamic headphones than they were with either planar magnetic headphones or lower-ohm dynamics with their adapter. And although the optional adapter for headphones 32 ohms and below didn't influence headphones over 32 ohms too much, it really produced a black background when utilizing it with headphones within the range of resistances that it was designed for. For example, the adapter worked quite well with low-impedance planar magnetic headphones and dynamics like the Dan Clark Audio Ether CX, Meze Imperian 2, Hyphaman HE1000 Stealth, and Emu Teaks. Success with this adapter inspired me to give the iFi IE match a shot with higher impedance cans as well, and this did the trick. In fact, I might recommend that you just skip the Musical Paradise adapter and pick up the iFi IE match instead. As all things considered, it generally works with a larger variety of headphones with the MP301, and is just as good as the Musical Paradise adapter sonically. So aside from the minor nuisance of some mild background noise without using an appropriate impedance adapter, the Musical Paradise MP301 is pretty great for HeadFi. It produces a large, three-dimensional sound with good depth, remarkable separation, and excellent dynamics. Overall, its acoustic articulation with headphones is absolutely and holistically lovely, just like it is with speakers. So I completely understand why some people look at the Musical Paradise MP301 as a giant killer. Not only is it physically small in its size, but it does indeed also pack a phenomenal punch and put out a monstrous sound when the right set of tubes are involved, that is. But if you want to get the most out of the MP301, you're going to have to be willing to invest and experiment with tubes, at least in order to achieve the best sound profile to match your setup. Luckily, most tubes for this amplifier are modestly or moderately priced, and most likely won't cost you more than $100 extra or so to achieve sonic bliss. Anyhow, thanks for watching and making it to the end of this video. I'll leave a link to the website for the Musical Paradise MP301 Mark III in the description below. And I'll also place links to other social media outlets where you can access and follow the channel, such as X, Instagram, Patreon, or www.intuitreviews.com. Make sure to check them out. But before you go, I'd also appreciate it if you make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and consider leaving a like on this video if you found its content valuable. Taking a few moments to do this really helps the content of this channel reach its audience and I truly appreciate it and you if you do so. And with that, I'm out for now.